the Maserati MC20 Coupe, the Cielo Spider, and the GT2 race car all together on the track. What's good, guys? Welcome back to Ron's Rise. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. Now, why these are some new iconic shots of Maserati's three supercars, the Coupe, the Cielo, and the race car, all variants of the Maserati MC20. Yes, I wanted to show these few pictures off together, but really I want to talk about the GT2 because I feel like we've kind of forgotten about the GT2 as we just covered again the Maserati MC Extrema, the very hardcore, very limited, very expensive version of the MC20. That really you could say in the Maserati world is this hypercar, unattainable, just super outrageous, aggressive, all that stuff. So you really forgot about the GT2. And a lot of people might get the GT2 confused with the MC Extrema. So I wanted to shine some light on this car again because Maserati released these beautiful new photos. So I wanted to kind of remind people what this car is all about. Now I know some people wanted a track machine that was street legal, but Maserati said the GT2 is a track only monster. But with the MC Extrema, which is a rolling work of aerodynamic art exclusively for track use, well, we'll leave that to do all the heavy lifting. But the GT2 is considered the successor to the MC12 race car and its model is ready to go racing at the Fanatec GT2 European Series. Now keep in mind that the MC20 GT2 starts as an MC20 before being completely transformed for track duty. Now the attempt for this is the return of racing weighed heavily on Maserati's decision to fit the MC20 with a carbon fiber monocoque which required only slight modification to incorporate the GT2's FIA approved roll cage. You also have very few body pieces that are shared between these models as the GT2 only takes bits of the door, the headlights, and the taillights. The front bumper and splitter assembly, louvered hood, engine cover, rear bumper, and diffuser all have latches for hasty removal in case of any on-track incidents. You got holes in the carbon fiber reinforced plastic body panels that feed air into the brakes and various coolers. You got the roof snorkel that delivers a steady breeze to the engine and transmission coolers. And you also have intercoolers from the production MC20 live within the GT2's hindquarters. And these are mounted a little bit more upright. Now, when it comes to the power plant, well, by now we know this engine very well. The Natuno twin turbo 3 liter V6, that powers the MC20. Now, this engine is about 80% the same as the streetcar, but you do have GT2 specific exhaust manifolds and larger turbochargers plugged from the MC Extrema. Now, even though we have larger turbos, well, that GT2 will not flex on the MC Extrema's 724 horsepower. Now, in its most aggressive engine mapping, the 3 liter produces the same 621 horsepower as the streetcar. So, why? What's going on with the bigger turbos? Well, it's said that it's better for tuning when balance of performance rules inevitably force Maserati ready to dial back the power in order for the pack to stay competitive. The GT2's motor force is sent to the rear wheels through a six-speed sequential racing transmission and an adjustable limited slip rear differential. Now we've been giving flowers to Maserati's Natuno pre-chamber ignition and two spark plugs per cylinder that is not only found on a road car but is also found on the GT2. Now, while fuel economy on a race car is not necessarily critical, it can be for endurance racing in the future because Maserati wants to trick the combustion process to allow it to calibrate an engine map capable of stretching a gallon of fuel further than a competition can. Now, when you talk about suspension, well, you have billet, aluminum, unequal length control arms that reside at all four corners, and the street car, well, that has a multi-link setup. Now, with this setup, the arms attach to the body via rigid ball joints. You also have coilover dampers that feature adjustable compression and rebound, and both anti-roll bars offer three adjustment positions. Because you have an 11-position adjustable anti-lock braking system, you have Pirelli P0 slicks, and when it comes to your iron rotors, you're looking at 15.4 inches in the front with six piston calipers up front, and 14 inch rotors with four piston calipers in the rear. Now you also have an electronically assisted steering rack that offers five settings of assistance controlled by a dial on the center console. And the GT2 has downforce generating dive planes with a three position adjustable front splitter and a 10 position rear wing. Now the GT2 is on its way to completing its first full season of the Fanatec series. And there are five customer cars that are set to line up the grid. Now, if you guys want the car here in the United States, well, you can get it for $522,000 to use for track days. 
That's just for track days because remember, this is not a street legal car. But if you got the money, the GT2 for Maserati is probably one of the most approachable and likable track cars in the modern day era. So with that said, what do you guys think about the GT2, the stunning new photos, and just the car overall itself? If you had the money for a track weapon like this, would you take it? Would you buy one for $522,000 just to use on a track? And do you wish they made a street version, a hardcore version of the MC20, maybe some sort of MC20 Stradale? Drop those comments down below. Now, if you guys did enjoy the video today, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and click that notification bell so you don't miss one video. And with that said, you guys be blessed, and we will talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.